It is the Boomer's Brain Trust, Johnny Dean and Dinah Smith. Dinah's here, 877-PLANNERS, our number. Once again, another hour If uh, in, in many cities, in some cities not. But if you miss us anywhere, you can go to boomersbraintrust.com and find the podcasts and the archives and all that stuff. Boomersbraintrust.com. That would stand to reason, of course. We're talking to Boomers, the show by and for Boomers. We are Boomers. And we talk a lot on this show about having a plan for our eventual retirements way down for some of us <laughs> but uh after travel uh family time hobbies and relaxation all of that probably in the first three or four days is there room for anything else well it turns out that for many boomers i, I think especially those who've been in business and dinah will tell you about this the answer is yes there is more to it retirement is not a time to slow down for those who are used to the fast-paced corporate world retirement is a time i guess apparently it is to ramp it up and, and, and here's the kicker. Let others reap the benefits. Hmm. Dinah has been prowling around, finding information on this from the people at, is it International Executive something? International Service Executive Corps. Service Corps? Yeah. Or Corps, if you prefer? Mm, IESC. Uh, IESC. Yeah. What, what is that exactly? Well, it's kind of nifty. And, you know, I've thought about this. You know, we, we talk about retirement because we know for us, especially in our positions, mm -hmm. it's going to be a while before we actually reach that age where we can do it. But uh, one thing I know for sure, and that is I'm not going to slow down. Uh, yes, I will take it easy on occasion, but uh, you know, I want to stay really active and I want to, you know, volunteer and I want to help in some mm -hmm. way. That's the point. So I, I, had, I had heard just little snippets about IASC and so I looked into it. And uh, here's a perfect example of somebody who decided to uh, help others uh, through IESC, and this is a, a fellow by the name of Tom Davis. He retired after spending 31 years as a top executive. Now, he worked overseas with Kimberly Clark, and he realized uh, when he retired that his experience could benefit uh, businesses which might be trying to uh, get along in, in developing countries. Maybe oh, they so were struggling a, businesses yeah, were in, struggling. Foreign country, in, in, in developing countries. In developing countries, oh. yeah. So Tom is part of this, this vast network of baby boomers, of course, those of us who were born in the U.S. between 1946 and 1964, who are now retiring and are looking for ways to share their years of hard-earned know-how. So Tom knew he didn't want to stagnate when he retired, so he volunteered for the International Executive Service Corps, IESC. It's a not-for-profit organization which promotes international economic development. Sounds big, and, and it is. IESC sent him to help a struggling but very promising business in Lebanon. Now, Davis went on... Uh, on track as saying it was lacking so much in modern management capabilities and organization and strategies and and just overall getting projects done that he was perfect for what he saw they needed. And this is a volunteer thing. Completely the guy's going to volunteer. Lebanon and volunteering. Yeah, and, and right. he doesn't need a salary. He's not looking to make money. He's looking to share okay. what he has. And he's just one example of how to utilize a virtually untapped national resource of highly educated, experienced men and women who have ended their professional careers but remain in very good health and have a desire to continue working. And I say working because there's no paycheck attached to it's, it. Yeah, it's, it's simple it's, satisfaction. It's tasks for no pay. Yeah. In fact, a vast majority of 50 to 75 year olds look upon retirement as a time to stay active and begin new chapters in their lives. We've talked about that. And these people are very talented in many ways and they have experience that goes far beyond what you get from a formal education. They want to find meaningful work after reaching retirement age in order to keep healthful and to contribute something important. Now, an aging population is an issue that is regularly discussed, but rarely as a problem of true magnitude. Right now, there are 79 million baby boomers in the U.S. who are at least 65 years of age or older, and that accounts for 26% of the population. So if American institutions and society uh, don't find ways of coping with so many retirees, the drain on our economy and social fabric is going to be huge. So this, you know, IESC may not have the complete answer, but for almost 50 years now, they've been setting a small example of what can be done when you send volunteers to developing countries whose entrepreneurs and business uh, communities there need American managerial and technical expertise. So they focus mostly on overseas stuff. Again, it's yes. developing countries developing. and anybody who has skills can volunteer and go 
just do it just to stay busy. Kind of a nifty idea, but of course it can be mind-boggling when you consider that this sort of expertise is being overlooked or, you know, worse, untapped. The ISC volunteers not only enhance the communities in which they work by increasing jobs and also helping with living standards, but they also generate some pretty friendly trading partners for the U.S. Now, another example of such talent is a man by the name of Hal Handley. He also is an IESC volunteer who uh, spent many, many long, distinguished years with Kraft Foods, and he volunteered with the IESC. He ended up going to Egypt, Lebanon, Ethiopia, Morocco, and Sri Lanka. And he also volunteers one day a week at the Washington uh, headquarters of the IESC, and he's really proud of the work he did in Morocco. He says that's where he helped local exporters meet stringent U.S. requirements on imported foods. Who knows this stuff? This except guy these would people. know that, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He summed it up pretty well. He said, quote, there's a feeling that you can make a difference. And really, that's what usually all of us want, regardless of our status. Regardless of what we have to offer, we want to make a difference. So these highly skilled and experienced professionals like Mr. Davis and Mr. Handley, they're part of a generation uh, which is very eager to volunteer their talents and their wisdom. So as a nation, I think we're just starting to kind of tap into this. We're starting to appreciate and value these mm -hmm. important contributions that folks like uh, these can make. Uh, Hal sums it up really well. He says, there are many people like me with incredibly valuable, valuable experience which will go wasted if they spend their time just retired. We solve problems, we figure out how to make things happen. He saw a need, he jumped in, resolved the issue. So the retirement baby boomer bulge is an issue that's going to have growing ramifications. We've talked about this, especially throughout our economy. And already leaders in the smallest communities all the way up into Washington, D.C. are working on resolutions which can sort of help facilitate the growing number as well as take advantage of that talent pool. For example, uh, Congress, They've been talking about this, and I think the ISC is heavily lobbying for it. Taxes? Uh, legislating significant tax incentives for ah. corporations and businesses, which will go on to stimulate some creative ways to use this talent, which is right now going to waste. So these are just a few ideas which could facilitate a nationwide movement. It, it could quite possibly result in an investment that's going to strengthen the economy and social structure of the U.S. and also give mm -hmm. us the opportunity to influence these decisions that are going on overseas. Oh, yeah, I talk about volunteering, and I know I'm going to do some of that when I retire. Absolutely. But taking what I was doing and used to maybe get paid well for in these particular cases and volunteering it not just in this country, but you're going to Sri Lanka and Morocco and Lebanon and doing this and trying to teach a whole new system yeah. of, of uh, business values and all this kind of stuff. Ah, oh, man, I, I think it takes a certain kind of personality. I would that. imagine it does, and I would also go so far to say that, you know, it would probably be extremely frustrating at times, but that's why these people were in the positions they were. You hey, know, they were them. in good, you know, good high for up them. positions. There, there are some people who just can't, they can't sit around. They, they got to, you know, and if, if they're not going to get paid, so be it. Give who them cares? a trouble. Give them a trouble and they will take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a trouble, we will have a answer for you with Professor Plum. There's more of this program coming up. It's the Boomer's Brain Trust. I'm Johnny Dean. She's Donna Smith. Don't go away.